I wanted this to be part one of a three-part series in finding yourself and on our truth, the information on our true self. And the slide, of course, says destiny of the soul personality. And each one of us, when we understand our true relationship to our true self, is what you would call soul personality. The soul generates a personality into this world. Now, exactly what that personality is and the destiny of that soul personality is not really understood today. Simply because they think they live and they die or they think they're reincarnated and um, it's not quite like that. When the, when the biblical authors state that it's impossible for them to understand, there's a valid reason why people can't understand. It's because they're only functioning in a I guess a three-dimensional type of thinking where the soul is supposed to be thing. So I have, I started this one off with the man's relationship to his highest self. In the epistle of Peter to James it's written that if the esoteric body of truth that Jesus taught was to become lost, it will remain even for those who really seek the truth, always to wander in error. Of course, nobody's ego would permit them to believe that. And that's what you basically have. Why? Because our true reality is inconceivable to organic man. We don't, in our natural organic state, we don't have the wherewithal, the, the, the intellectual depth to comprehend a 12-dimensional reality. We see things, everything in the limits of this world. Ignorance of our true self. Our true self or our soul self will remain an enigma so long as we believe that we are our true self. Eastern religions promote the doctrine that the soul incarnates into the body. What they believe is that the somehow the soul forgets it's past, they call it passing through the cloud of forgetfulness. And it, they come into the body and they don't remember their past. That's not exactly true. Western religions promote the doctrine that you are the soul. You came into being at conception, you're the soul, and you go on to never, never land in the hereafter. These are another fall fallacies. Both religious paradigms are equally and gravely flawed, so they do have a bit of truth to them. When you begin seeking on a flawed foundational paradigm, everything you build on that foundation is equally flawed. So in other words, in order to really begin to build on the truth, you must understand, you must have that correct foundation you're going to build upon. And that's what the teachings of the original teachings of the way was intending to do. Give you a, a correct paradigm in which to build upon your mind. Understanding these things, Thomas Jefferson said, ignorance is preferable to error. And he that is less remote from the truth who believes nothing, than he believes what is wrong. Because if you believe what is wrong, then you have to overcome that error. So if you believe that you are the soul like our friend Jim, who's into Eastern, not you Jim, another Jim, It's into Eastern philosophy, he's looking to follow his master and escape the wheel of rebirth. But that's a flawed foundation because that personality that's generated into the life of Jim never lived before. And the neither is he going to reincarnate. He's going, he came from his soul, he's going to return to his soul, and he's going to dwell within the reality of his, his soul. His soul cannot come into the body. The soul is a 12-dimensional being, transcending time. You can't bring that into the body. Neither can you erase all the memory and the being of the soul to come into the body. In the analogy of Plato's cave, 
The people in the cave are, are portrayed as prisoners who are only able to see shadow images. And it's important to understand why they only see shadow images. Because the original, the source of all of what we see is a 12 dimensional reality where the images that we see is a three dimensional image of the, of the higher reality. Meaning that also that what we see is an allegorical image of this higher reality. You can't manifest the whole thing. You can't manifest a 12 dimensional image in this world because of the limitations of the physical. So what you see is like an allegorical allusion to what it means. Those few who escape and who succeed in escaping the cave are portrayed as madmen. Because when they come back to this world realm, they try to tell the people what reality is, and of course nobody can understand them and they will reject them. Our true reality is so far beyond man's perceptive comprehension that our own high reality is said to be inconceivable, which it is. The normal person in our society today has great difficulty in comprehending the reality of the soul. Just the dimension of time makes it impossible for them to understand. In the Gospel of Thomas, Jesus said, Let him who seeks continue till he finds. When he finds, he will become troubled. When he becomes troubled, he will be astonished, and he will rule over the all. What is possibly being taught in our churches today that would astonish people? Absolutely nothing. Because what we're learning, and even in the schools, in our academia, in our churches, and everything else, is all nothing but shadow images which is what this world is. It's an allegorical image of a higher reality that's inconceivable unless we possess the mind and the eyes to see it. What's astonishing is that we are not our true self. That all that we believe in this life is fragmentary and gravely flawed. That all of man's religions are entry level and elementary. That includes the Eastern religions, the Western religions, all religions. The Gospel of Thomas said, recognize what is in your sight and that which is hidden from you will become plain to you. Which is the same thing as saying that recognize the shadow images that's being played out in Plato's cave and you begin to see the connectivity especially if your mind deepens and expands, which is the purpose of this world, to deepen and expand your consciousness beyond the organic limits. This is why when we talk of higher reality, the people in the churches or even the people in the, in, in the you know, um, in academia or anything else will say, yo, you're all crazy. Just like they said to those who escaped the Plato's cave and came back and said, you're all prisoners in this cave of illusions. And there's a world beyond here that is inconceivable. Looking outwardly, we see an illusion that is an allegorical illusion. We are dwelling in the mind of God. Now that's very difficult for people to understand. God is not a person that we can go and talk to, like we're talking here. God is a great thought, a mind, the mind of all of creation, and within the mind of everything that exists, exists because God is thinking it. Our souls exist because God thought our souls into existence. We exist because our souls thought us into existence, called a holographic reality, a level upon level. The words of astronomer James Jeans, the universe begins to look more like a great thought than a great machine. So modern physics and modern science is beginning to recognize the truth of reality. Astronomer Arthur Eddington, the stuff of the universe is mind stuff. What is it that we see? Symbols or aspects of mind impressed into the forms of nature. 
We live in a world of allegorical imagery. Even our physical bodies are allegorical, images of mind impressed into matter. And this is difficult because we learn, or we've been taught, that the mind is the brain. Well, that's only one of the centers of the mind. The mind is from the tip of our toes to the hair on our heads. This is why when you draw, I believe it's probably next, this is why when you draw the tree of life, you put it over the image of the man. Because the whole body is an allegorical image of the mind projected into nature. In this case, in this drawing right here, I also have the Star of David. Because the Star of David, David gives us the laws that we have to perfect within ourselves in order to become whole, in order to escape this realm. In the Star of David, looking at it, I see a horizontal on top, which is the spiritual centers up near the head. And I see the point in the bottom. And I see a horizontal line across the bottom with the point in the very top, which means that the division, to overcome the division and fill the laws is the opposite from where it is. The spiritual must be resolved in the physical, and the physical must be resolved in the spiritual, and it must become perfectly balanced and whole and complete, which is what the image of the Star of David does. When you put it over the tree of life, the 12 sphere tree of life, what you have is the perfection, wholeness of mind. And of course, all that is over the body. I think I covered that already. I covered that. Upper horizontal is the spiritual, with the third force balance point in the earth. So when you incarnate into this earth, the most important point is the point at the bottom, in the physical. If you work on that, then you draw the spirit into you. Most people look at the equation in an opposite way. They're focused on the upper sphere of the mind, whereas the bottom sphere of the mind is going to bring the upper into your life. So they're going at it in reverse. The monk, which Ra used to be, Remember those lies, Ra? <laughs> what they tried to do was they tried to deny all expression in the lowest centers. They sat and prayed. What did they do back then, Ra? <laughs> Pray and do their mantras and meditate and whatnot. And they were dead-ended. Because it's, you have to draw a spirit into the body from the top. You do that by making the body a fit environment for the spirit to enter. You have the power to focus on the upper, sense, upper spiritual centers, but all that means is you're going to be gazing at the light. You can't become the light without becoming whole. So to become one with your true self, the 12 spheres of mind must be evolved and balanced across the spectrum of the whole. Here's one of the problems. What we got here is white light through a prism, which means that white light is made up of the seven colors of the rainbow. You just don't see it because you're not, your vision is not breaking it down to the seven colors. So it can be said that the white light of your soul is like, comes into the body as a prism where the seven colors then are divided into the seven spiritual centers of the, of the mind and body. So if you're focusing on that top with the, in the, in the third eye, what you're doing then is you're gazing at the light. You can't become the light unless you bring wholeness to the body, which means you must bring in the red and the yellow and the orange and the green and the blue into the equation. This is why the way the monk does not work. The soul is a being of white light, our true self. We have no body, we have no sex, we have no grace, we have no nothing. But it's a being of intelligent white light. The soul is pure intellect, portrays self as the mental mind. White light is the balance of the seven colors of the spiritual centers. 
which means when you enter into this physical world and you have these seven spiritual centers with the colors of the rainbow, what you have is a division of the light that makes up the soul. And you have to bring those seven centers into harmony in order to become your true self. Here we see a picture of a, a woman with the, we see the seven spiritual centers in the body. Notice that the bottom one is down in, in the bottom of the body. That's part of the mind. So the whole being is part of the mind. Now if you focus on that violet light in the sixth center, what you're going to do, you're going to gaze at the light. You can't become the light without bringing those seven colors together in harmony. You can't do that by denying in any way or, or failing to evolve the lower centers. You can't evolve the lower centers by focusing on the spiritual centers. You can only evolve the, spirit, the slower centers through the mind, through the tree of life. By design, the seven spiritual centers are designed to open as the mind draws and channels a great amount of bioenergy, a vital life source, into the higher consciousness expansion of the mind. In the pattern of creation, we can, of course, try to force the spiritual centers to open by focusing on them. Or we can bring higher consciousness to the mind, and that will naturally draw upon the energy. In the, from the spiritual centers. And the sp spiritual centers will then begin to open automatically as they are designed to do. If we were to prematurely open these spiritual centers, you hear people going bonkers from drugs and whatnot. A lot of it's because the, one of the centers opens, one of the chakras open, and then they go loony. We hear that all the time, especially in the New Age with drugs. It's because they haven't developed the mind. Spiritual centers are there and they're designed to open as more energy is drawn into higher consciousness. When you manipulate and open the spiritual centers prematurely, you get distortion. You get distortion, you get to think you're God, you get to think you see God, you get to see a whole lot of things, but basically it's all distortion. Until you know yourself, you'll never succeed. So all the religions of the world basically have all flawed foundational paradigms. The idea that we're going to focus on our chakras without developing the mind creates distortion. What? Here we see the 12. Now this is another problem in the, what we call the 12 within the 12. And this, what that means is that holographically the pattern repeats itself in each lower level as it goes down to creation. So at each one of these 12 spheres is 12 centers within them. It's like there's a small tree of life within each sphere of the tree of life. So man who only works on such a low level of his usable knowledge, what he's doing is he's going through the, he's never using the, the upper spheres, he's using the earth that's present in the upper spheres or in the outer columns. And this is important because they never get beyond the organic levels of consciousness. In other words, if you're grounded into the into a earth level of consciousness and then you focus on the up above all you're doing is you're using the earth that's in the 12 and the 12 or the 12 the earth that exists in the highest sphere because the 12 is within the 12 which limits you to that 10 percent level of consciousness potential of consciousness If you focus on the upper while suppressing and ignoring the development of the lower, it will remain impossible for you to begin to embody the white light of the soul in any way, shape, or form. Focusing on the sixth spiritual center, or the third eye, permits you to gaze at the light of the soul. Without developing, developing and balancing the whole, 
It will remain impossible to embody the white light of the soul. It will remain forever gazing and never actually becoming. Why? Because the soul is the balance of the seven kingdoms. When it's projected into the body, it's projected into the seven spiritual centers. Unless you can bring those spiritual centers into harmony and oneness within your body and have the white light in your body, you can never become your true self. If you learn and develop the linear spheres of mind, you will remain out of balance and flatlined. And this is a problem in our modern society because we, we're highly educated or schooled. And, but all of our education, our, our acquiring of knowledge is all coming through the linear. We don't at all develop the intuitive. And while women have greater access to the intuitive, in most instances they are using the logic linear intuitive because of the external learning. We send them to regular schools in which they learn in the same way that men learn, instead of developing their intuitive powers. When you educate a woman as if she were a man, then you rob her of her most valuable gifts of mind and spirit which is her ability to tap in through the linear, through the in, intuitive spheres of mind into the soul. We have this source of knowledge already within us, but we don't know how to use, how to tap into it. This is why we're prisoners in this cave. If we was to develop ourselves in a balanced form, then we would have to develop the intuitive alongside of the, of the linear. Traditionally, the Jews have studied Torah, or the men have, and women never studied Torah, because that would be educating them in a linear type of fashion. Women were taught to use and develop their intuitive abilities of mind, which can't be done through rote reading of the Torah, or any other kind of outward text like that. We recently made some posts where we looked at the um, the uh, Sybil and Greeks, in the ancient Greek, and the, uh, the women of great intuitive abilities. And these women had developed this only because there was cultures and societies that geared them up to use the intuitive, not because we sent them to school like we would someone with a linear state of mind. So here you have a daughter you're going to have to figure out how you're going to have to help her educate and become more intuitive when our society is trying to make a totally linear. Wholeness means that every aspect of self is fully developed and representative within the spectrum of the embodiment. Mark 2.17 They that are whole need have no need of a physician, but they that are sick I came not to call the righteous, but sinners. What this means is that if, if it's, this is the words attributed to Jesus, that means that there were righteous people at the time who did not need a physician. These people who did not need a physician were of course known as Essenes. The Essenes were a spiritual culture, a spiritual society, and they evolved the people within this group to be spiritual people. The women were not taught to read Torah. They were taught to develop their intuitive powers of mind. Husbands and wives in relationship with male-female were understood. If Jesus can be portrayed as a physician, then those who are whole need not the physician, i.e. Jesus. Yet Jesus is the allegorical pattern of development when you understand the gospel is an allegory. This is almost out of time. Oh, you got five minutes. Do we have any thoughts, or Ron, you have any thoughts that we want to add to this? You can tell us your life as a monk. <laughs> And you did the smart thing and abandoned it. Well, uh, 
one of the things that I feel like I had was uh, you, you related to about the linear um, and analytical, I guess the analytical thinking and believing that you can only, pros, only pro, progress in that direction with that, uh, that, that way of thinking. Uh, I find that um, I find that when I when I um, when I speak to people, there's often a need for for knowledge you know, to, to understand something. But oftentimes that need for knowledge has been subsided from a more essence need to more of a, a more of a false personality need or more of a a linear progress, a linear need where they think they can think through the process, and a person has to get to a point where they can begin to see and sense where the question comes from. Because I believe the question comes from a deeper place, uh, but at some point it becomes supplanted by personality, and it's used to actually keep the person where they're at, it becomes part of the illusion. And what I have seen is that people, they shun away from the, the, the intuitive where it's more of a search of trying to... Old wives' tales. Yes. <laughs> focus, focus. Right, right. They don't want to like how you, you mentioned about the body and how that's where they're supposed to work in, it's the, it's the earthly kingdom. They were supposed to, they were supposed to uh, grow and make uh, make it to a, a point where we can draw energy down, where we can actually attract the energy. A way of opening. People don't want to open. Uh, they don't want to have a real connection with their bodies in that way because they're all up here. You know, they're all up with the. They think the mind is the brain and. They're all up here with analytical thinking and everything else. So they're not open to the prospects of actually awakening in them that extra sense that can bring to them that, that need to develop that deeper part of them. Our culture is just totally out of balance. Yeah. It's going to this linear view of everything. And when a Probably the prime example of intuitive, of course, is women. I know. The your, your women, it's called women's intuition or, or whatever. And when a woman gets a feeling of something, and she has no way to prove what she's feeling. She has no way to prove to the linear mind what she is seeing or what she's feeling. And this is the case in all of our culture. Like when I tell them that when you drive without a seatbelt, you're actually trying, relying upon the intuitive to forewarn you of impending danger. I mean, this is unbelievable to them that you would even know of impending danger. When you ride a motorcycle and you develop that ability to communicate with the other drivers on the road, this is unknown. The idea that you can communicate, or when I drive, I project into the minds of the people I see. If I see somebody, especially you develop, a good motorcycle rider will always develop this ability. If you see somebody coming into an intersection, and you'll make you'll what, like make contact with them, and you'll intuitively project yourself into them. This way, they look at you, and they know you're there. They feel you're there. This has no linear explanation, but it's so. Uh, there was a tornado one night that was coming near our house. And I talked to the tornado. I learned that as a Native American, we used to talk to tornadoes all the time. But you can't tell that to someone who's has been educated in our type of education. This is true of all things. 
like the old uh, movie with the Volkswagen and the, the mystic, you say, well, I talked to the car. There's been a few times where I talked to the motorcycle as I was going down the road in a scary situation. Everything is living. Of course, you have to develop the ability to communicate. And you do this through your own spiritual advancement. Um, people are born into these indigenous cultures, like in Africa, South America, or some island in the Pacific, something like that, in order to develop these abilities. Because our linear society is totally flatlined on these abilities. They, don't, they, they would never believe it. The Huna could release their animal nature into help them or go forth. What's the movie? That movie? Mm -hmm. Emerald Children. <coughs> Enchanted something. Like yes. That. No, Golden or oh, Green. Emerald. Emerald, Emerald Forest. Yes. That's actually a true story. <coughs> but it has no place in the thinking of our present day society. If you had been born or raised, and the story was actually now the the one who was the focus of the story was a was a white boy, wasn't an indigenous person, but because he had been stolen by the indigenous people and brought up in that society, he developed these abilities. And I lived a life in, as a missionary in Africa. And my children developed those abilities, which they learned from the native people. Same as that boy did in the Emerald Forest. You can develop these abilities, and these abilities, as a Native American, we develop these abilities. So if I say that you can communicate with a storm, or you can communicate with anything, because we're living in the mind of God. Everything is being projected, Everything has a consciousness. Everything is alive. There is no concrete matter as we would think of it. It's just a different vibration. And this is what science is now beginning to prove. Of course, science is in a pickle. Because in order to prove their assertions that they're making, they have to begin to transform themselves which means they're going to have to become conscious of the troll spheres of mind within them. They're going to have to evolve them. They're going to have to become whole. They're going to have to make the journey up to their higher self. And this is not done in academia, not in a linear type society. Maybe, we, in fact, we've got myself and Ra got into a JJ where, they, where Alice Bailey thought they should do away with those societies. Those are saviors to people like us that are stuck in these, these linear modes of thinking. Unless you had those societies that you could go into that, into a lifetime and learn those abilities or go in there as a visitor and develop those abilities, there's nothing in our culture that would develop those, that side of you. The only reason I have it is because I developed it in past lives. Probably everybody else here has been the same way. There's nothing in our culture that develops the intuitive. You're not even allowed to use the intuitive. And yet the intuitive has to be able to balance the linear in order to bring heaven and earth together within you. Unless you can find a means to develop the intuitive, then you're remain flatlined and you'll only be developed so far. Now I don't know what the modern science is going to do now that they've begun to prove. I guess they do it mathematically and everything else that they that well, the I think there's some there are some researchers out there that are starting to explore a bit. There's a there's one that stands out in particular uh, called the uh, wrote a book called My Big Toe which was uh, basically trying to use psychology to use the, the uh, kind of linear test procedures but executing them in the internal environment. So uh, 
uh, and there's there's something else I've read about where uh, like just just stuff like uh, lucid dreaming or where one of the things that they had done was that book I have <coughs> on soulself.org where the guy uses the other hand and he, he goes through a certain way of programming to, to act, use the other side of the mind. And it, everybody that does these disciplines, these things that they're doing, all says, gee, my linear mind is lying to me. Yeah, so I mean, that's a procedure you can do. So it kind of does both worlds. And, I'll ask later. Right. And basically, because the linear sees things so differently than the intuitive. And the intuitive is basically outlawed. Now in the new age, intuitive can run wild, but because it has no structure, no balance in itself, it's all over the place and it has no real focus. But there are morsels of truth out there in the new age which you can grasp. Just like there's morsels of truth on the linear. You have to pull this all together back within yourself. When I told certain people that the only way to understand the spiritual meaning of the scriptures was to begin to tap into the intuitive, which would then tap into your higher self, and then you would learn the true meaning of the scriptures, they thought that was ridiculous, that the linear consciousness couldn't figure out what the scriptures meant. The purpose of the scriptures is to develop the intent to it. And that the only way you're going to tap into the true main spiritual main scriptures is to begin to use the, intu the intuitive. Because what's written has an entirely different meaning than what's being the underlying messages. Any other thoughts? Um. Come on, Sean, you're always full. Sean? I don't know if it's necessarily a question. I'm just trying to think of like examples. Uh, is, uh, one thing I've, I've experienced in my life is, is something real simple. It's just when you're at a traffic light, or I'm at a traffic light, I always kind of know which car to get behind. And it may seem silly, but it's, I mean, it's, it's something, right? And I think a lot of people can relate to that. Oh, there's a part of you that knows which car to get behind. The, the bike couriers who ride in the city were saying, there was an interview with what he said, he gets a feel like he can almost like he can anticipate everything that's going to happen on the road before it happened because he, otherwise he'd die. You know, he'd be you should be able to anticipate everything because it's already known. And this is the development of the intuitive, but how do you prove that to a linear-minded person? Well, they do it now. That you know, in Australia, back they're focusing on you know sexual equality and 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 uh, you know sexist issues. But the thing is, they're not in the the focus is on on like you said you've written before on trying to make you know women like men instead of trying to, what would really help them which which is in, in essence suppressing their their natural abilities it's actually making things worse not better and reinforcing all the problems instead of allowing women to develop their own these uh, women culture. in the ancient cultures had bona fide gifts and they held positions within the culture that no man could have. And their wisdom that they had by this developed intuitive was highly esteemed and highly sought after. None of this exists in our present society. That's why in the book brain sex, they portray modern women as surrogate men. Taught to think like men, act like men, and they're, they're totally out of touch with their own feminine strengths. And what we're doing is we're hurting these young girls. We're depriving young men of developing the ability because this woman is there to help them develop the man. Just like the man is there to help and develop the woman. Without this interaction, we're going nowhere. Now how modern physics is going to overcome this, because most of them are coming from a purely academic background, which they have to begin to break. 
and change in order to succeed. Right, Jim? You're being quiet. <coughs> Back when I was... Tom. Oh, Tom. <laughs> I get, uh, get my name mixed up. I only see him once every two years. Um, I remember it, I went with my father to a, a small, I forgot what it was called, like me, not like a meeting where we're discussing topics. I don't remember what the topics was, but uh, to do with biology. And I was, you know, 13 years old or thereabouts at the time, and I remember bringing up stories I'd read of, you know, a man in his house and the dog starts barking at him suddenly and then gets him to go outside and then the house collapses and, and, and those kinds of aspects of uh, uh, things that they, they don't know the, the, <coughs> the cause of in academic point of view, and there's a lot of interest in that. But I think there's a fear of anything that they can't prove solidly that uh, they'll be you know, laughed out of their, their, their position. They'll be pushed out of their academic position. Unless they, you could prove it, unless they could see it in a laboratory, then it's not real. As long as they continue along that track, then they're totally like fish out of water. And that's what our science has become. So there's this, there's this cult within science who sees things as they really are, but now they have to be able to prove it. And that's going to be impossible under our present way of thinking. What was the Einstein quote about? You can't use it, keep, keep on using this present way of thinking to... Mm -hmm. Solve, pro solve a problem using the, the same way of thinking that created it. That's true. 